This video is going to help explain how we can take a subassembly inside of a major assembly and not expand it inside of the bill of materials. So as you can see, we have two subassemblies here. We have the crank sub and we have the spider. Now the spider is built up of unique parts, but we're using a subassembly for the ease of use of bringing something into the assembly and putting and positioning it. The crank sub is going to be an assembly that we purchased, and I don't want to show these items inside of my bill of materials. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cursor, I'm going to activate it, I'm going to open up the subassembly in its own window. And once it's in its own window, I'm also going to insert design table. By inserting the design table, we're going to stick with all the defaults, and we'll simply hit the green check to apply. Once I have the design table open, as you can see, we have default, and what I'm going to do inside of my first window is type in our command. In this case, it's going to be dollar sign never underscore expand underscore in underscore b o m. By typing in this command, we add we enter in a yes or a no. By typing in Y, this means that we're never going to expand this assembly inside of any bill material that we use. Then I take my cursor and simply pick inside of SolidWorks to accept that as our new design table. Once I have that done, I can take my cursor and go back over to the main assembly. And inside the main assembly, I'm going to generate my new drawing. I'm going to drop in my view. And then I'm going to generate my bill of material. As you can see, we have parts only. And by labeling that as parts only, now when I go in, you're going to notice that we have our crank sub, bracket, but we have spider and our two pins. If I go back to my main assembly, you'll notice that inside the spider sub-assembly, we now have spider and one long pin and two short pins. This makes up our spider and our two pins. Now, for ease of use, what you may want to do is generate an Excel document that is going to have your information in it. And inside of Excel, I'm going to type in my information. Let me do some formatting. And then my first configuration is going to be default. Now once I set up these two cells, I add in my yet, and I have my cells filled out, my next step is to save this document. And when I save my Excel document, make sure that you have this turned on to .xls. Save the document. Then we're going to go back inside of SolidWorks. Now I realize that the spider is now a purchased item, and I don't want to expand this inside of the bill of material. So again, I'm going to open up the spider. And for ease of use, now all I need to do is insert my design table, save from file, and browse. Now we have our never expand. I can now say open. Now once we create the bill of material, when I scroll over, all I need to do is make sure that this says Y. I'm going to insert it inside of my assembly. So now, when I go back to and generate a new build material, parts only, you'll now see that we have crank sub and spider. So by saving the doc off as an Excel document and leaving it where all my users have access to the file, I can now quickly and easily add in that design table into their design. And by doing so, whenever subassembly they draw that into, once they get into the drawing of the full assembly, they simply say parts only, and the single will now break it down to parts and their subassembly names. 
I hope this video supplied you with the information that you required in order to successfully implement SOLIDWORKS at your site. If you have any further questions, please feel free to give us a call at 800-276-6340 or drop us an email at techsupport at solutions.com. Again, that's techsupport, all one word, at decisolutions, all one word, dot com. You can have a great day.